Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's Kevin Jackson Show. So, where we left off, the Dreamers had decided they were going to sue the President of the United States. Illegals living in this country who believe that they have a birthright now to be here because Barack Obama offered an illegal piece of legislation, an unconstitutional piece of legislation. And when the real president, a president who understands the law and obeys it, decides he's going to undo that illegal legislation, of course, the left have a conniption, and that empowers people who are lawbreakers, whose parents are lawbreakers. Now, whether they know it or not, it's one thing, but in knowing that you are in this country illegally, you have the nerve to say, you know what? I'm going to thwart the will of 61 million plus people and a bunch of others who actually do believe that illegal immigration, whether you're a dreamer or not, should not be the the law of the land. So they want to thwart millions of taxpaying Americans and say, to heck with your system. We're going to sue the number one man. I want to know where this could happen. I want to know where you as an American could go illegally, know you're illegal, and then decide you're going to sue the leader of that nation. Could you do it in Cuba? Could you do it in Russia? Could you do it in China? Oh, you don't like those choices. I tell you what, could you do it in Britain? Where are you going to get away with this? This is ridiculous. But it gets worse. Because the NAACP has decided to sue President Trump on the DREAM Act. Yeah, the NAACP, apparently the colored people that they care about this time are illegals living in the country. See, when the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People was founded in the early 1900s, it didn't include illegals. It, it, was, it was centered around colored people, which were, of course, black folks. And it's morphed into some sort of special interest group that thinks it's part of the ACLU, another leftist organization that probably is well past its time. And it now decides, the NAACP that is, that it should be able to sue the President of the United States on behalf of illegals, mostly Mexicans. Now, I know what the NAACP is up to. They've, I've heard their former con- Congressional, Black Caucus, Congressional Black Caucus members say, you know what, in order to get what black people want, we may have to break a few eggs. We may have to sacrifice some black folks inside with the Latinos, the La Raza, the, the race clan. In order to empower them, so we empower ourselves. Into which I've always asked the question, show me where there are black, brown people living in mass. In other words, they are the dominant society where you want to live. I would love for a black person to tell me where in Africa, what country they want to go live in. And I'd love to get one of the rich Republicans to say, wherever you decide you want to live, we will send you there, get you a stipend. So to get you started and you can go live in Somalia or you can live in Sudan or the Congo or Chad or wherever you choose, Gambia, name your country, we'll put you there. I'd love for any of these Latinos, part of La Raza, the race, the Aslan crew, whomever, I'd love for them to tell me what part of Latin America do you want to live in? You want a Central America? You want to live in El Salvador? Where do you want to live? We'll send you there. You want to live in, you want to go back home to Mexico? You want to go to Guatemala? Where? We'll send you. You know, look, there's hardly a place where brown people live that is living peacefully (laughs) without strife. Hardly a place. And yet these people act as if white folks in America are so oppressive. You know where there's oppression? In every one of the countries I've mentioned. There's oppression and it's not oppression of others. It's oppression of the very people that they look like. You often hear me talk about the 68 and a half million people on the run. They're not on the run from Switzerland or Norway or Germany. They're on the run to Switzerland, Norway, Germany, United States, Canada, United Kingdom from places like Yemen, Syria and so on. Anyway, back to the uh, NAACP crazy group suing Donald Trump on behalf of the dreamers. Apparently, they believe that illegal Mexicans don't have uh, access to the American dream. (laughs) I know hardly uh, the irony is is so in your in your face. I'm not surprised they don't see it. So I thought about this and I said, you know what? President Trump should sue the NAACP on behalf of. America, 
but particularly black conservative America. And he should include in his lawsuit, Obama, all the Democrats, particularly the Congressional Black Circus, these people are co-conspirators against the dreams of young blacks in America. Recall when Donald Trump gave the speech where he talked about the dreamers and the fact that the dream that's been stolen has been stolen from, he called it, the African-American community. And Donald Trump would be right. Rampant unemployment in the black community affects the very dreams that people build their lives around. When Look, I don't know how you dreamed. I, everybody dreams differently. But I can tell you how I dreamed. I dreamed of a country that I could wake up in every single day into freedom. And I could choose the path I wanted to go. And I did that. I remember as a young kid, my brother uh, would come home from college, my oldest brother. And he would, uh, he's really my cousin, but you guys hear me talk about him this way. And he was, a, a, he was learning engineering. And he'd come home and he went, we had a little shed in the back of our house. And he'd go inside of there and he would start, he had a soldering iron and solder and different electronic components. And I would go in there and I'd watch him. And he'd build little things, you know, and get them to light up or whatever they were doing, whatever the project was. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, you know, telling me, he's explaining it to me. And then he says, well, what, this is what's called a breadboard. And these are solder. This is, uh, these are trait, you know, electronic traces. And, uh, you, you know, we'd solder the various components. And I said, what's that component? That's a resistor. I go, why do you, why do you have a resistor? He goes, it t- determines how much current will flow through a particular part of the circuit, whether it's in series or in parallel and so on and so forth. This is an inductor. And it has a certain function within the circuit and introduces other characteristics that a resistor doesn't have. And this is a capacitor. And you need this you know, so that the circuit doesn't bounce and things like this. And he explained this to me and I was just glued, you know, to, to the etch, the etches on the, um, on the printed circuit board and, and all the different things. I was like, wow, this is cool. And it drove in me the the want to be an engineer because I, it was cool to watch how things worked. And that if you put more resistance there, the, the current took a path of least resistance and what the function of the capacitor was and how long it could hold the charge. And, the various sizes of things, you know, a one, one ohm resistor, a thousand ohm resistor, etc., And how you could influence the circuit based on all these things. And it was just fascinating. My brother helped me establish my dream. And you know what I did? I then studied hard because they were like, man, if you're going to be an electrical engineer, you got to be smart. So I studied hard and I got a scholarship to college and got a double E degree with computer science and math degrees as well. That's how you do things. That's how dreams are formed. My brother didn't come home and tell me about civil rights and how, Kevin, you can't be an engineer. Black people, this, that, and the other. He wasn't, there was no militancy to this. It was, dude, you, you study hard in math and science, et cetera. You get into college, college, boom, boom. You get a degree. And next thing you know, somebody wants to hire you. And that's what happened. I got hired. And I designed supercomputers. And I designed currency sorting equipment. And I designed money counters and counterfeit detectors and things like that. Stuff that you use that is still being used today. Because nobody was going to poo-poo on my dream. And the whole time, you know what I was thinking? Man, I want to be a millionaire. I had other talents. I was like, you know, I'll get an engineering degree. And then later on, you know, when I save up some money, I'll buy me a little house over here. I'll give me a cabin. I'll get this. I'll get a nice car. Yeah. You know, and, and you were not going to interfere with my dream. But what we do is we allow people to interfere with kids' dreams. And the very people who claim to want to help you with your dream are the very people killing it. Our, I told you, I, you guys have read my book, most of you, The Big Black Lie. I told you, white folks, these enablers and these black leftists would tell me, dude, white people after you, they want to get you, this, that, and the other. And I was like, I don't even see any of that. I talked about Floyd Mayweather the other day saying, if you focus on what you want to do in this country, there is no limit. And I'm an example. Floyd Mayweather is telling you I'm worth millions of dollars. I make millions of dollars every day. Why? Because I focus on Floyd. I'm not worried about what you think, what you think. I'm focused on Floyd. You know, I'll give you an example. People were like, Floyd Mayweather is going to fight McGregor. And, you know, who's going to win? I told you who's going to win. Then as soon as Floyd Mayweather beats the daylights out of McGregor, everybody, oh, he didn't beat him that bad. Well, what if he fought MMA? You know what Floyd said? Nothing. 
because he ain't fighting MMA. He didn't get called out to fight MMA. There's no money in him fighting MMA. He did what he is set to do. He answered the call to a guy who called him out and said, I'll beat you. And he says, fine. It's in my best interest to beat this guy. He trained, hadn't fought in two years, retired. He trained. He, they brought this journeyman in that everybody was all hyped up about. And Floyd spanked him. And everybody, well, he's just a journeyman fighter. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> all the every all the talk. He could probably beat him. He could do that and the other. Floyd whooped his head. Looked like he hadn't even fought. Made $250 million. Highest paid athlete on the planet. And went home thinking about Floyd. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.